My story. Cut. Start over. So, to start this off, I'm a lawyer, right? I don't necessarily have friends. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but some of my experience, I'm generally someone who's always by myself. And a lot of people put a negative connotation on this. And um, I just want to put... I just want to say that this is not a bad thing, being by myself. And I just want to go over the experience and how being a loner isn't that bad. It's actually really interesting. I'll expand on that later, but it's just, I generally haven't really talked about this to much people. Other than my brother or so, or my mother, but as you weren't, May maybe be able to tell or not able to tell. I am a loner, and I don't. I generally have a very, very inactive social life because having one is too much for me. I just can't. It, it's nothing to the people. There are plenty of good people out there, but just social interacting is just too much for me. I just can't. And it's not that I hate myself, but I do have some ideas about society that I'm not a big fan of, um, but generally to sum up my experience so far, this is the thesis to explain everything before I expound on it later as I mentioned earlier. I don't leave my house. I know. I don't. I literally don't. The only reason why I used to leave my house before COVID-19 was school. That's it. I just stay home, you know. And people think that that's boring or whatever. I love staying home. And for the past year and four or five months, that's all I've been doing. And I personally have been thriving. I've been able to do more than I ever could have dreamt of, dreamt of doing. And I'm very proud of myself. Um, of course... Of course, there's always, you know, consequences, cons, of whatever you do, but <laughs> the pros of everything, really, generally in most of my situation, outweigh the cons, and I'm expecting to stay a loner my whole life, but I don't know. See, some people, they thrive. They thrive on social interaction. They need it. They crave it. And I don't. I honestly don't. I mean, the only medium that I do interact through is maybe like, um, I don't know, like Reddit. I don't really use that. Very rarely do I go into it just to read on maybe how to solve an issue with Windows or something or how to, you know not mess up the pens on your LGA CPU or whatever. That was a project from a couple months ago that I was doing. But being a loner is it's 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 a thoroughly good experience. Um you get to learn yourself a lot. And you you really get to see who you are as a human being. And you're usually with your thoughts a lot, you know, like you're constantly, um, you're constantly like hearing your own mind talk to you, not literally, I'm not crazy, but it's, it's an interesting thing because you get to reflect, you're constantly self-reflecting yourself and who you are and how you can become a better person, and I don't know, I'm, I'm generally <clears throat> an open, empathetic person. I mean, we all have our times when we just get mad and just really want to just wish the world could burn. Because, I mean, who hasn't? We've all witnessed something that's just so cruel and just disgusting that, you know, humanity has just done. That just makes your blood boil. 
we all have those moments. And personally, you just self-reflect. Why? What caused you to, you know, become angry, dissatisfied at the world and society? But I don't know. See, I don't know. I'm just explaining. I I'm just going to go through the list. Sorry, I'm not paying attention to the camera, but I'll look into the camera from now on. So that, that covered the self-reflection part of being a loner. Basically, as a loner, you have very little interaction with other people. Maybe with your interme intermediates, but that's generally it. But, you know, I've gone through some serious crap through my life. I've taken a lot of crap from people. A lot. <laughs> a lot, and I mean a lot. And... I've generally done nothing about it. Do you want to know why? Well, here's one reason why. Two reasons. One, I really just don't care. I just usually don't care. I used to get bullied a little bit in middle school. And I don't know. I just don't care. I used to a little bit. I kind of do now, but not to an extent of what you would think. The only reason why I have care a little bit about all that crap that's happened to me is because how could you treat someone so harshly but not even know who they are? Can you answer me that? I don't think you can. I don't think anyone can. Oh wait, there is an answer actually self-hate. Over the years I've constantly understood that that there's people people who treat others like crap for no just reason generally come from a bad situation or they just simply hate themselves no matter what it could have been. They hate how they look, they hate how they've just unaccomplished anything. They hate how they're, pre how they're viewed through their peers and it's just so many things but this video is going to be basically unedited there's going to be no cuts the only cut that there's going to be at the beginning is it, it, it's from me testing my microphone and setting up my uh, camera but as you can tell this camera is cheap the microphone is cheap I know it sounds dumb to say but I really don't generally have a use for this equipment. And if you weren't able to tell, I'm on a pretty expensive PC, but the only thing about it is I don't really interact. So what's the point of getting a camera or a good microphone other than maybe my YouTube channel, which is a hobby, and I allow it to... I create that... The reason why I have my YouTube channel is to see my older self. All right. It sounds bizarre, but I use my my YouTube channel to capture myself. It's a time capsule. And... I don't know. Just able to witness my younger self slowly adapt and become who I am now. And that's generally life. And most people don't think about it, but... Being able to see yourself progress is... It's an interesting thing. To see who you become in the end is it's a spectacular and beautiful thing to witness. As humans, we are able to choose and just choose who we become. And I think I've become a pretty good person so far. I'm not necessarily hateful. Although sometimes, like I did mention, I do get mad sometimes, but not in the way you'd expect. But I guess to cover the next part of my chapter so far my experience is recently I've been inspired it's not that I'm ashamed more like I was inspired by seeing someone create their experience about themselves being ugly on the outside of course not the inside but It inspired me to make a video on my experience of being a loner. Because some people might not know how it is. A lot of people, generally kids my age, they've got 
you know, all these friends, social medias, not YouTube or Steam, other stuff. But they go out all the time, they hang out with their friends, they, you know, go to the movies, they ask the girl out from school or something. And I don't do that. There's no reason to. It sounds really weird, but there is no reason to, in my opinion. And I, I just don't feel the urge to have, you know... Humans are just... A lot of people are just mean and just crappy. And... I don't know. I just really don't feel like interacting. It's just too much for me. And then being treated harshly by someone also is a big put down. You know, like, you kind of avoid that. But... Of course, you do find friends. But generally, I do have some great friends. Friend, well, one of my best friends, he's been my friend since I was like three years old, but he's my cousin, but, um, yeah, he's pretty busy now because we're basically adults now, so, you know, you're not able to do as much as you used to, but he's, he's got his own path he's going on, he's, you know, very occupied, he's about to be a dad and stuff like that, but, yeah, he's 17 as well, but, um, yeah, he's, he's really one of my main friends, because, <laughs> The oldest memory I have of he and I was when we were probably five or six, right? And we went to Chuck E. Cheese or whatever, and it was a sleepover. But the, the Chuck E. Cheese we go to is Roanoke. It's, it's a couple hours away. Um, it's in Roanoke. It's about an hour, a half, two hours away from where I live. And I remember coming back home that night, and me and him spent hours playing Street Fighter, um... I don't know which Street Fighter it was, but it was a really old one. It was on the PS2, and yeah, that's a lot of my childhood was spent on place on PS2 until I became like nine or eight or nine. But I started playing PS2 when I was like I don't know four or five. But yeah, I played a lot of like classic 2000s games on there, and just oh man, I spent my life on that PS2. But you know, this is just me venting. You know. I'm just, I don't see the point of having there, there being like a chronological order of my story. I'll just give off like what comes to mind, I guess. But, you know, I don't know. But I, I've covered multiple things, you know. One of my best friends, that's still my best friend. You know, but when I say a loner, I just generally don't interact socially. I do have some, he's one of my great friends, but... I just don't interact, really, and, or if I do, it's very, with him especially, because he's busy, it's like every couple of months, but I'm fine with that completely, but, you know, I'm trying to think, what else I can talk about, I'm trying to see what else, I don't know. I'm going to try to cut very little out of this video, so if you need to, you can skip ahead a couple of seconds, whatever. I'm just really trying to think. I just, this is a complete improv of my experience so far, and yeah. So yeah, I just hope no one's outside eavesdropping on this, because I don't feel, I would feel very violated. But... <sighs> Some of the things that, I don't know, this is going to sound really, really weird, but I plan to stay single my whole life. And if that sounds absurd to you, then it just does. I, I thrive on being alone. That makes me the most happiest. Being alone, or, you know. The only thing, social interaction I won't be ever drained of is interacting with my brother. I love him a lot. And he's literally my best friend. I could talk to him whenever. But, other than that, relationships or when I'm an adult, I'm going to be alone almost 24-7. I'll probably have a job where I can just work from home. 
and very rarely will I ever leave. I'll probably just, you know, but I just want to stay alone, and that's how I'm happy, and some people don't understand that, but being alone, it's, it just makes me really happy, especially having things to do, like, I have plenty of hobbies and things I love to do, and most of them are generally things that involve one person, like, you know, bow staff training, hand-to-hand -hand combat, I can practice form, I can just watch videos and practice that kind of stuff, but I do exercise and stuff, um, I've got a pimped out mini bike that I customized about a couple weeks ago, I spray painted it black, removed the muffler, I removed the throttle lock so I can go like 30 instead of 25, 35, whatever, and there's a lot of things I do. I love playing mill sim games, that makes me happy, like Arma 3 and stuff like that, you know, VR games, I play Boneworks, there's a lot of things I can keep myself occupied with, and yeah, I know, I, I'm not very unfortunate, you know, but it's just awkward seeing a teenager not necessarily um, have friends, you know, and, yeah, I don't know. It's very weird seeing that. Especially someone who's 17, but, yeah, and apparently, I'm going to be advancing, I'm going to be graduating with the advanced diploma this year, literally this year, 2021. I'm graduating early, um, in December instead of May, so... Yeah, I'm not going to be attending the prom. I probably could, but I don't want to. Um, I haven't attended any dances. We started having school dances in 8th grade. I've, I haven't attended any, and I don't plan on attending any. Nor will I be attending the 12th grade prom. And nor will I be walking across the stage. None of that just, it, it seems invalid. You know, to my path. It, it's just, it's completely invalidated through my through me my means of justifying it and it's really all up to me you know it's up to me what I want to do so but yeah I just I guess I'm just venting just talking about a lot of stuff that I haven't really gotten to talk to a lot of people about and I don't know if this is a if this doesn't come out as a good video or receive a lot of views I don't really care well I kind of do because I think people witnessing something like this or hearing from first hand of experiences it's, it's a really good learning it's a good way to learn is to hear other people's experiences and what makes them happy in life we all have our own things some people you know they like to work on cars or they like to build websites or they like to hang out with their friends we all have our own things that make us us and sometimes it changes but for me it generally doesn't you know and I don't know I just think this is a really good constructive thing to make for myself so I can witness it in the future so I can come back and see my younger self discuss these topics and see how my life has changed by then whether it's a month or however long but I just think it's extremely constructive to be talking about this because I can see, I can again self reflect. But I don't know. But some of you might be wondering what bad experiences I was talking about. Other than the bullying, I've had some pretty bad stuff happen to me. And, um, I don't know necessarily I should talk about all of it because it's not necessarily bad, bad, but. I don't know. My main thing is I've just been treated by like poorly by people that I generally know. But otherwise, I don't necessarily see something else. This sounds kind of like a brag. But when I'm in school, um, when I was in school, and generally in public, very rarely was I ever in public before. But. I've noticed something. It sounds really odd. It does. What am I about to say to you? You know how I say I want to stay single, right? 
Well, I am. I'm going to. But there's one weird thing about that. See, I don't run after girls. And I, I, I do like girls, but I don't run after them. But apparently, girls show me interest, and I don't necessarily know how to be polite about it. Like, it's nice and all, but I don't really care. I mean, it's nice to know <clears throat> that girls do like me or anything. I'm not a weirdo, <clears throat> but I just don't really find use in it. And it sounds like I'm bragging, but I promise I'm not. I'm just honestly speaking through my honest truths. I wouldn't lie about this. <clears throat> That's like a couple, like a year, a little bit before school released. Um, see, I'm, compl I'm not popular at all, right? I don't talk to anyone. I don't really talk to the teachers. I don't do anything other than just do my work when I was in school in person. I'm not in there in person anymore. Thank goodness, but, um, <laughs> I just don't interact with people, and I remember before school let out, there was two instances of, one was a really awkward instance with a girl, and then the other one was with this one kid, he was so perplexed, and interested, and confused, and just didn't understand my situation at all. He's completely interested in why I don't speak with people, and I rarely, rarely ever talk to people at school. And I actually like him, he's really cool. But, yeah, I explained it to him, I explained what I do at my house, my musical entrances, interests, entrance, what I'm interested in musically, um, genres, you know, stuff like that. But I don't ever talk to people, and it was a really odd sight, because a lot of people never see me talk, ever, ever. And it was really, it put a lot of questions on people's faces, like, whoa, how was he able to get this guy to talk? Well, see, the guy, he was really interesting. He had same, very similar interests. He was, sorry, I just caught up in myself. He was interested in what I really was as well. You know, and just like Star Wars and stuff, and just a lot of stuff, PCs. I was talking to him, I was about to get a PC eventually, way before I had one. I've had mine for about a year and a couple months, two or three. But, um, yeah. That was a weird sight, but the next one wasn't as wholesome as his. It was really confusing. So this girl, right, she was really popular, and all of the guys in my school sent for her. Not me. I don't really see the point of simping. Or being so attracted to some girl that'll probably just ditch you in five seconds. I don't see the point of being <laughs> head over heels for someone that doesn't really care about you. You know? And I remember I had a couple classes with her. Before school, COVID let out the season before Sorry, the semester before the semester where I had a negative altercation with her. Altercation. I'll explain that later, but let me chronologically explain this. So, I don't talk or anything, blah, blah, blah. I'm in this economic class, right? And, I'm sitting there, I'm, I, you know, doing my work, trying to focus, because that's generally what I do. I do my work, I laser focus, sometimes I can be distracted, but after I complete my work, we were allowed to do games, you know, be on our phones, I didn't have a phone, and the one that I do have is a flip phone, it's at my house, it's here, but I didn't bring it to school, nor is it online, but there's no reason for a smartphone if I have a beast PC, I don't see the point of that, I'll just use a $10 flip phone, and I don't even call people, so there's no point, but she would like, I remember before we had like some dance or something, right, there was a dance, um, a pep rally. <laughs> Poor schools, I feel bad for schools. But, there was a pep rally, and I don't attend this stuff. Nor was I planning. But I was trying to focus on some of my schoolwork so I could finally rewind and relax before school let out. Because that was the period before school let out. No, that was my last period before the last period. So, say for instance, there's 
four periods, it was my third period, or block. And it's the last one before the last, last one. And I remember sitting there, and she was just rambling and rambling and rambling and rambling. And freaking out over some dress. Like, <laughs> you're really that obsessed and worried about coming to a pep rally or school dance in a dress? Total diva, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's quite obvious. And I remember just hearing her just keep talking and complaining about it. And her friends... Oh, man, her friends. She had some really, really genuine nice friends. But they ended up ditching her a little bit later. I remember... But one of her friends showed interest in me as well. She kept flirting with me before school let up as well. There's a lot of girls that flirted with me. And I don't know how to react. So I just try to just play like I don't hear anything. And I think that makes them want to come after me even more. But... Um, I remember just freaking out about, you know, it, it's like months at a time, I have to hear her talk about her social media, kids, popular kids, and bulls, it's like stuff that does not matter, so insignificant, specifically to me, like high school, what people think of you in high school doesn't even matter, what matters in high school and school is what you do with your chances, as in your chances academically. How people think of you, I mean, it kind of matters, but not really. It's really how you think of you. And that's, that's honest, if you think about it. I mean, how people do think about you matters to an extent, but not an extent to where you're like, you know, dying. Dying, absolutely, to make people think you're the best of the best. I generally try to keep a neutral reputation, but mine is known as being the quiet kid and is extremely smart and just doesn't talk. That's generally how people people have said that around me before. I've heard them speak about me. And yeah. But I remember her freaking out and I just I got so mad one day. I didn't say anything to her. I was I just got so mad. I just got tired of it. Hearing it, hearing it weeks and weeks. This bullcrap, insignificant high school drama. What is this? High school musical? Jesus Christ. But I just got mad, and you know what I did? I got my keyboard. And I just start spamming buttons, just... Just... To release some stress and anxiety. I was just so aggravated. I didn't say anything to her. I just got mad. And I just basically just start pressing stuff on the keyboard really fast, like, fuck. Just... And then three seconds later, she decides to imitate me, right? Oh, God. She decided to basically do the same thing. And I just blew it off. I just didn't care because, you know. And then soon after that, after I showed anger or disgust, whatever you want to call it, irritation with her, she seemed to start being attracted to me. And that is not what I was going for. I was just pissed off that I could not focus on my schoolwork. But a couple months later, I noticed she kept like looking at me or something, whatever, right? It's like, I don't know, she just kept, you could tell something was up. A little bit before school let out, one day I was drawing um, a picture. I, I still know what picture I was drawing. I'm pretty sure I was drawing a picture. Or I was trying to just mind my own business. She decides to sneak up behind behind me. I knew she was behind me. But she was able, able to somehow slip her way behind me to where no one else noticed she was behind me, right? And she, she leaned up behind me and whispered, I don't like you. I have never been this confused in my life. I was finally able to slightly decipher the meaning of this altercation or interaction. I wasn't fully sure, but I think she was trying to show interest. Like I said, most of the guys at my school, <clears throat> they simp over her just because she's beautiful. <clears throat> you know, some of the most prettiest people <clears throat> are the most ugliest. And that is true, but not always. But she was pretty obviously ugly inside. No matter how much makeup you slap on your face, you still want to be ugly on the inside. Unless you're able to somehow manipulate and craft a mask of your own that appeases the people around you. But, borderline is, 
I've had some really, really weird, awkward altercations and interactions with people. I, I, as someone who doesn't speak, it's just weird that there are interactions like that. Like, I don't come near you, I don't, I try to stay away, and it seems like the more you try to avoid, the more you'll have to face. Sometimes. Sometimes. Or, you know, it's like, I don't speak at all, so it works in extremes, you can thank the universe. It's like, I don't speak, and then the, the, then the next inevitable interaction, it's just really bizarre. And it, like, maybe it's just some girl flirting with me, and it's just awkward, like, I don't really understand why you're flirting with me, but, yeah, it's just, I, I have some really weird experiences through my life, I don't know. I just hope this was helpful to people. I'll probably be making more videos about this just to get off my chest about who I am. I feel like my viewers and people just don't know necessarily who I am. It, it's hard to explain. I, I could start explaining this now, actually, to sum it up. I'm generally a very, very, like, I've already summed up my personality in about two words earlier, but it's hard to understand someone when you don't know who they are, and I think that's why a lot of people try to show interest, like girls, because I'm a complete mystery. I mean, you just see this guy years and years and years, and you don't hear him speak, you don't hear him talk about anything. The only thing I would talk about at school is like, you know, the question, like an answer to a question, like, oh, yes, or this. but. I did, I remember a long time ago, this one guy came over to my, my table, because I eat lunch alone, I ate lunch alone, and people s pity that somehow, somehow that deserves a pity, I, I know in middle school I usually just ate in a silent lunch room, just so I didn't have to sit out, you know, like, or I would just sit by myself secluded, but in high school, it's like almost everyone's got a friend to sit with. And the only girl that sat at my table, the table was empty, right? The girl that sat at my table, she was literally a loner, just like me. And I didn't speak to her. Not that I didn't think she's a bad person. But it was just interesting to see that. That, you know, she and I were both loners sitting at the same table. And don't make this into some unironic, love interest bullcrap, but... She was a very nice person, and I could tell because of the times that she was able to speak and talk to people. But the only times that happened was generally group activities, and that happened with me as well. But I keep speaking to a minimum. But, um, I remember, actually, yeah, I remember this guy came over to my table, and he, he, um, he told me, he's like, hey man, I was like, eating my food, so I looked down, and I looked up at him, I'm like, yeah, he's like, hey, these girls over there want you to come over, they, I think, he wanted me to go over to their table, they wanted me to talk to them, but I was like, no, it was weird, because it's like, all these 11th grade girls, and I'm in 10th grade, are like, sitting there, drooling over me, they want to talk to this quiet kid, I should have went over there, but I didn't, but, yeah. Oh, and one other social interaction that was one of the that happened in uh, in uh, middle school. So when I was younger, I didn't talk to any girls or anything. I never really have. I don't really plan on it. It's a useful skill. I mean, you can always learn skills. You never know when you may have to use them. But generally, I haven't had to learn the skill, and I guess I've had it naturally. Because the girls that I have talked to, it seems like they're just in a trance. And I'm not trying to just be. See, I think you can think, I speak with my mom a lot about life, and I think having the ability to speak to my mom, since she's a woman so well, and, you know, I don't really talk to most, I don't talk to men, really, it sounds weird, but it's true. I talk to a, a teen, boy, male, my brother, but I don't talk to my dad, I don't like him, I'm not going to talk about that, but he lives with me as well, my mom does, but... I speak with my mom a lot, very rarely, I mean, sorry, a lot generally, and I talk to her about deep stuff, but 
I think speaking with my mom for years has taught me how to speak with women. I just generally know how they are. I'm not aggressive. I'm not toxically masculine. Um, I'm an open, empathetic person who really cares about other people. Um, I can see someone, you know, who's having a bad day and just feel that pain. And just silently wish that person was feel, will have a better time, like a better day or experience. I just don't, you know, like I can just... I can just see somebody feeling something and just know how they feel. I may not know what's causing it, because that's generally a whole other question that requ requires a lot more information, but, you know, you usually can tell when someone is not feeling the best. And see, I can feel that, you know, like, I just, I don't know. But I just care for people, even if I don't know you, and I see you that you're, you know, you're, you're suffering, you're feeling miserable. I actually care, you know, I'll care for that, you know. I may not say anything, because I'm generally too shy, but, you know, I can care for people, you know, no matter who you are. And, and something I haven't gotten to mention is my enemies. How I feel about my enemies, or people who have done me wrong. This is going to sound very bizarre. As a lot of my things that I have mentioned that sound very bizarre, but I generally don't, generally don't wish hate or evil upon 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 the people who have done wrong towards me. Revenge doesn't do anything. The only thing revenge will do to you is bring you down to that person's level. And if you have any religion or whatever, you don't have to have a religion to just pray or speak to your inner mind. You know, like, maybe you can just speak to your, the, the person in your head and be like, you know, you know, you can just speak to them and be like, I wish forgiveness for thinking evil about the person or such and such. Like, maybe you, you thought for a second that you wish something bad would happen to them. And then you immediately are like, oh crap, no I don't. Why would I want someone to get hurt? Or why would I want something bad to happen to that person? Why not something that can happen that will change who they are? As in fix their nasty, aggressive, mean attributes. You know, but there's just so much stuff that I really want to talk about a lot. And I don't think this video, this clip of experience, this this video that you're watching is just filled with absolute truth. This None of this stuff is BS. I mean, some of this stuff I can go into such deep, deep, deep detail, it's kind of hard to make this stuff up. I'm a generally awkward person, and I really don't care, but I just hope someone out there has learned about my experience, and I'm sorry for the horrible camera and the horrible audio. I just really want to get this experience portrayed by any means necessary, and I mean, I probably could write a book about this kind of stuff or a long, long, long Google Doc, but I'd really have a video accounting for this, you know? And, um, jeez. Uh, uh, yeah, don't mind the hair, it's all over the place. I, I hope you learned from this experience, and thank you.